This is a demonstration of using JavaFX property-based objects in your UI, and it's contrasted with using POJOs in your UI. Now, POJOs are well supported in JavaFX, and they're great because they're everywhere. They can be domain objects, transfer objects, value objects. They can be marked up with annotations for XML and JSON processing. They could even be JPA entities. However, the property-based object gives you some significant architectural advantages that the POJOs don't. So let's take a look at a feature. I have a global search and replace, and I have two identically defined tables, the top POJO table, the bottom binding table. And when I try to replace a string through a, in both tables, you'll see that only the binding one takes effect. Let's take a look at some code. Now, when I'm saying POJO versus binding, uh, the POJO is a any type of class that's adhering to the Java Bean standard. We have fields, we have getters and setters. In the bound example, we have the same type of thing, except we're using some Java FX wrapper classes instead of the the um, not native but the uh, standard um, Java Lang classes. Um, and in addition to providing getters and setters, I'm also providing a uh, prop, uh, property uh, accessor. So in both cases, we have very similar looking collections of fields, but because this one is FX enabled, it's going to be uh, allow me to do a user interface update. Now, getting into the controller, um, I have two model data structures. They're array lists, one for the POJO and one for binding. And at the start of my FXML initialize, I add both items to these models. Then as I'm preparing the table, I use some value, uh, cell value factories, and I set the items to those models. So I do that for the POJO line 82, and I do that for the binding line 97. And when I mentioned that POJOs work well with JavaFX, this is great because we did see our user interface um, uh, we added the model elements to the user interface in the POJO case without any extra code. And same thing in the binding. Now the difference comes in when we talk about the implementation of the global replace function. Now the global replace function is going to apply the same lambda to both model objects, but only one is going to be see the result in the user interface, and that's the binding one. And so this very similar looking code is um, actually not going to work in the POJO case. And this is more than just a, uh, a convenience or some type of, um, of a small feature. This is, has a significant architectural impact because when I want to update my user interface, and let's look in Scene Builder and see what that is. These are two of the similar tables. When I want to update these items, I don't necessarily want to access those UI objects. In this simple demo, we have one FXML, we have one, uh, one controller. Uh, it's, it's a little difficult to see the big picture. But if you have a large application, you may want to update these tables on other screens. And it's not always convenient to have uh, an extensive coupling of the user interface. Uh, picture a collection of tabs. If I make a change on one tab, I want to see it reflected in the other. Well, if each tab knows about the internals of each other tab, you will have a big uh, maintenance problem. Uh, you can also have a big performance problem as you have to provide uh, heavy reloads that are going to um, you know, potentially uh, fetch data or something like that. So when you have a controller that can base its, its functionality on model objects, those models are really uh, good to share among your application. So I can pass weak references or I could make this available via Google Juice. And as you can see over here, think of the applications. This is just a global search and replace, but anything that I might want to do across the tables by way of an update, uh, that's fair game. And strategically, uh, you may still be using POJOs throughout your application. Uh, I don't think it's suitable to try to pull in these classes on the back end, even though you may be able to compile against it. 
Uh, if you're working with RESTful Web Services, for example, I probably would keep those as marked up POJOs, in which case you can use a variety of wrapping techniques. One thing that I'd like to do is to provide a constructor uh, or a to method to go back and forth. Um, that's trivial code, and it's probably something that's suitable to be um, taken care of in a framework. But I, for, for the straightforwardness of the class and the speed and sort of architectural advantage of using this approach, I would prefer um, using those Java FX classes, even if it meant a little bit extra boilerplate. <laughs> Thank you.